But first, a message from our sponsor. Comic books have come a long way over the years. They've always been wonderful works of art, but it took the public a while to catch on. We've also seen comics journey from a cheap disposable entertainment to hard-bound, designed with painstaking craft, and back again. And not only does the look of comics range from tiny folding zines with single images to 600-page epics and oversized artist editions, but the subject matter that these stories cover is infinite. Comic books, even American comics, were never just about superheroes, and genre type means less in comics than any other art form. The relationship between words and pictures is the essence of comics, and that is ingrained in the DNA of humanity. Comic books are world culture. From fun fantasy to entertaining education, there is something in comics for every person. In this show, we'll check out the comics that I come across in my own journey to becoming the cartoonist that I want to be. All of the books that you'll see were either purchased directly from the creators or, in most cases, from local comic shops. So when we find something that interests you, please head to your friendly neighborhood comic shop where small business owners and nice people are ready to help. But there's only one way you're going to find that perfect story. Read more, more comics. comics. Hello everybody, welcome to episode 5 of Read More Comics. I am your host, Scott O'Green, and with me are some new comics. It's Wednesday, which means if you head to your local comic shop, they're going to have brand new comics for you. And I'm sure a treasure trove of old ones as well for you to dig through. But in the meantime, if you need some advice on uh, some new comics to check out, well, this is the place. Let's dig in here. Where shall we start? Ah, good. One of my personal faves, 100 Demon Dialogues by Lucy Bellwood. I love this book so much, I've actually had it sitting up on my shelf in this nice little holder for a while, just being displayed apart from the other books, because it's so nice. Um, I do love this one, as you can see, let's see here, this is a regular comic size right here, and then you have this book coming in at a lovely square format. This was genius because, um, like a lot of success stories nowadays, the way that um, she gets this out to the public is first for free to share it so that everybody can see it. And in that square frame, she signed it here. Um, very lovely person to me. She's very kind. Um, and uh, But yeah, so she has this square format and it works great for social media. So she was able to show all of her stuff on Instagram. Um, I highly suggest finding her if I didn't say already. Lucy Bellwood. B-E-L-L-W-O-O-D. This is another person that I first heard about on Dan Barry's podcast, Make It Then Tell Everybody. Once again, you guys should definitely check it out, and I'll post a link below of her interview um, with him. I think she's been with him a couple times, but uh, the first one is the first one that I heard. So, um, But as you can see, it's a square format, kind of a gag-a-day sort of a thing. Um, but as you can see here in the beginning, the type of book that this is listed as is Comics, Humor, and Self-Help. So 100 Demon Dialogues, the demon being this guy, and uh, that being kind of the monkey on your back, the thing that's always kind of telling you you're not good enough, or what you're doing doesn't matter, um, just kind of that voice in your head that you're always battling. And what's cool about this is it kind of reminds us uh, that we're not alone in that battle, because whatever devil or demon or monkey on your back this guy is, what a great frame for this metaphor, um... I think that uh, this guy enjoys it much more if you feel isolated, if you're by yourself, if you feel like you're the only one experiencing this thing. I feel like that uh, entity gains power. So there's your little Luna Love good um, uh, world advice. But anyway, so she shares her experiences in a very funny, uh, open way. No holds barred, really kind of sh letting the... Uh, uh, and awards and all, you know, she's really kind of showing good days and bad days when she's dealing with it well, when she's dealing with it not so well. Um, but showing that that's okay and that's something that everyone deals with. Uh, this is a lot of fun getting ready for this because I just read through the whole thing. Like, it, it is a gag a day thing and you could kind of pace yourself. You can almost see it being on one of those uh, Rolodex, you know, self-help, you know, encouragement of the day or, or psalm of the day type thing. Um, but this is her format. She's a cartoonist, and she wanted to get a beautiful book in people's hands, which she definitely did. I do like this binding, and you have this embossing on here with the reflective. Oh, yeah, that shows it really well right there with all those guys on it. Um, so she is the writer and artist, but I think she did have some help with the book design. It says, 
Book design by Allison Haller. H-A-L-L-E-R. Haller. Anyway. Um, so I love it. It's a great style. Um, <clears throat> you can gain a lot from it. From uh, So like my wife's been having a rough couple days. And there were a couple passages as I was reading through this. Getting ready for this comic show. That I thought were pretty applicable. And it's great because it gives you that thing that you hope uh, like a single cartoon gag gives you. Which is like that simple huh. Where you kind of laugh to yourself because you realize that this complete stranger on the other side of this page somewhere else in the world um, has an insight that makes total sense to you. And uh, it's just, I don't know, reminds you once again that you're not alone, that you're not the only one that felt that. And especially the power of cartoonists and uh, comics where you have a great little visual metaphor thing for it that really kind of personifies what you're going through and can just really hit the nail on the head and be like, it's a weird little bit of relief. It's like having a cool glass of water when you're really thirsty. Um, it just hits the spot when you see something like this and uh, you're in experiencing it or have experienced it. So I love this book. Um, there's a So it's a, it's a project of her. She does these 100 Demon Dialogues. She did 100 Things um, where she illustrated and make a, made a book out of that. She does all these fun different projects that aren't always just your normal... Um, comic graphic novel thing but she does have a uh, she's an adventure cartoonist um, and so she uh, works and lives out at sea on big sailboats at different times and has comics about that um, so she there's a lot of really good stuff I don't want to go further towards the end because once in a while she'll have a couple where like it's kind of a to be continued or they'll have to do with each other that play really nice um, but then the last uh, several um, kind of all have to do with each other and her relationship with this um, demon, with her demon, which I think is awesome because it's not something that you can just ignore. And uh, she doesn't, and and I don't know, it's just it's a really heartfelt moment at the end uh, that is surprising. And so it does really have, it, it honestly does kind of have a begin, middle, and end to it because on, on top of just this being her different insights with having a demon, um, like this one right here, actually. She goes, 55 more? Couldn't we just take a nap instead? Forget all this. Um, but being like just the chore of doing one of these a day for 100 days. like So it's that journey that you're seeing as well, which is a lot of fun. I highly recommend this book. Um, I got this uh, through her Kickstarter, but I've seen it at a lot of different bookstores here in the Pacific Northwest. I do think it's something that uh, if you reached out... Um, to her online, you could easily buy it. Uh, you could give it a try in your local comic shop and see if they can get it. I know Emerald Comics Distro, um, I believe, has had a hand in kind of getting this distributed up here in the Pacific Northwest. So uh, perhaps that's somebody that can be contacted uh, outside of Diamond um, if that normal distribution isn't jiving with this one. But uh, check it out, see if you can order it at your local bookstore, your local comic book shop, um, or just look her up online and. Uh, let her know that uh, her work means a lot to you because she's pretty cool and receptive. I've got some of her sunset art postcards hanging on my wall. And, uh, yeah, she's a pretty cool cartoonist. If you have questions about her work um, from the side of just entertainment and enjoying it as a spectator, or if you're a cartoonist um, and you're looking for some insights, she's, like I said, a lovely person to talk to. So you guys should definitely check out this book. She's an extremely talented cartoonist. To be able to do this stuff where it's like minimal scenery, this type of thing I would love to be able to do great. Where you just have the characters and on a thing. Sometimes she's obviously got more to the scenery than others. But this ability to like leave a decent amount of white here. And this is a full composition that doesn't leave you wanting more. It's this type of work, like I said, that kind of gag -a day Rolodex thing. It works perfectly for it. And to be able to execute that without a whole bunch of other stuff and cross-hatching and things that like... Like me, I almost feel like they're gimmicks that I'm using to like make people look at my art longer sometimes, you know? Like if I use a bunch of this texture here and a bunch of that texture there. Um, but she hits the mood, she hits the expression, she hits all that stuff uh, with minimal work, which um, a lot of times essentially is what cartooning is. It's kind of minimizing and simplifying and getting all of that emotion across still. And she does. So I highly recommend this one. I talked a lot about this little guy that's around eight minutes on this little one but I love it and you should too it's uplifting it's funny it's cute it's uh, comical it's great alright what can we have next on the docket ooh 
Farlane the Goblin, a fairy tale about finding your forest. This is a good, uh, fun indie follow-up to Lucy Bowood's Hundred Demon Dialogues. So let's dig in here. Let's start with uh, book one. Alright, this is book one, The Tink Lands. Book number two is called The Salt Lands, and there's seven of these. And uh, what I really like about these is, is first, the format. It was fun, it caught me off guard. It can still sit in your uh, comic uh, boxes, if you like, because it's, it's about the size, just a little bit bigger, of a regular comic book on its side. But it's got this layout, which was a lot of fun and something different to kind of check out. Um, I picked this one up at um, Push Pull uh, down uh, near Seattle. Um, so that's an awesome independent underground shop that you guys should definitely check out. But anyway, so the format of this book, as you can see, it's the same picture in kind of the green and the brown here going around. And all seven books are the same, I believe. Although, you know, like I said, I only got these two, but from the look of them online. And then a different color picture here in the middle, kind of showing an, 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 <coughs> excuse me, a direct excerpt from the story. That part's in color, but the books themselves are in black and white on the inside, like you can see there. Lovely, lovely line work. I love all of these textures, and it doesn't look overdone. Sorry, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but then on the back here, like it says here, Farlane the Goblin, a shaman from the forest of Finden, has spent years wandering the very many odd lands of Wug in search of a forest to call his own. He only has ten lands left. And so this one says the same thing, but then he only has nine lands left. So it's a great premise to a book. Um, it's, uh, it's formulaic. It's found its own formula, although it's not formulaic to other stuff, but it's found its own formula. And it picks up where, like, he's been searching through these lands for, like, a long time with this uh, tree on his back. And it's kind of a magical tree, and he's a magical goblin, very... Uh, a tree goblin, I don't know if that's used in here or not, but uh, he's very connected uh, with the earth and with trees and growing things, and that's like where a lot of uh, that magic derives from, is this plant and, and his magic through that plant to be able to conjure um, different trees out of nuts, and I don't know, it's like a whole... You can kind of see, like, when he's trading with this group here, you can kind of see that Dungeons & Dragons sort of what I have to offer to the campaign sort of a thing. But it really doesn't, like, go down the normal fantasy uh, paths, which is what's really cool about this. Um, I'm sure you could make a, a far lane character uh, for your D&D campaign, but uh, just saying this doesn't totally read like it, because then you get these other beings like him, and he doesn't even necessarily look like a goblin, and I'm not even sure what these creatures are. And as you go through, kind of all the new creatures are, are a lot different from things that you've already seen. So he's wandering through forests and different lands. He's called a goblin. Other than that, it's, it's not super recognizable as the, the normal tropes for fantasy, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings, Wheel of Time, magical wizards, and, and stuff like that. It's got magic, it's got fantasy, it's got different creatures. Um, it's also very funny, it's also very cute in good ways, both of those things. Um, those are pros, uh, because, uh, yeah, it's just, there's a lot going on here, but the style I love. He even kind of lets you know that partway through book number two, he switched from micron pens to, oh, I forget what he said. And I'm sorry, I'm saying he, I actually, I don't know that for sure. I guess I got a masculine vibe from it, but honestly, I don't know. And that's an interesting story in itself about the um, artist. But we'll get into that here in a second, because I don't think that the artist would want the story about their name on stuff and who they are to be front and center. Sorry, right here. The first book was inked with Micron pens. Midway through the second book, I changed to using a nib and inkwell. The third book is all nib and inkwell. And has like this little ending statement in each book. Um, just this little, hey, thanks very much for checking out the book. Thanks for picking up the second one. I've loved it. Um, I really highly recommend these. It's all ages, um, but I'm going to be seeking out the rest. Uh, not just from a cartoonist appreciation point of view, although I definitely have that with this stuff, with these strong silhouettes. Um, simple, quote-unquote, uh, panel composition, straightforward, but getting a lot of story told through this. Um, I'm definitely going to be seeking out the rest of this, just from an entertainment aspect. Uh, it definitely reminds me of an adventure 
uh, Sunday funnies but in long form so I didn't read a lot of Sunday funnies but like with the sort of more simple format and straightforward character this totally reminds me of that type of a thing kind of and maybe it's just the alternative style that it's laid out in as well but um, but it all goes together like I said it is a longer form storytelling as he's going through and meeting these different creatures and trying to survive and like I said the textures of all this stuff is amazing and then like when you have these other creatures like the Tinks um, they're not like other creatures from other stuff you don't really know I don't know they don't exactly remember uh, resemble other stuff and then simple things like this he had to go jumping so he grew these mushrooms on his feet for padding and, and traction as he's running and jumping I don't know it's just pretty ingenious in execution as far as who's the, who this book is by, and I'm sorry I kept saying he when I really don't know, um, the artist for the, or the writer slash artist, the creator of this book, is now listed as Pug Grumble. I'll have the link below of their Instagram and where to find this book below, but um, the uh, author of this kind of had this whole, um, oh, not diatribe or speech, but just <clears throat> kind of outlined why on these first few books as I look through them there's no name there's no this is done by so and so this is lettered by so and so there's just nothing it just is what it is and that was intended by the uh, writer slash artist they really just wanted the work to be the work not have any preconceptions about who the artist is based on a name male or female black or white um, they just wanted the work to be what the work is um, uh, which is cool. That actually sounds like something I would do. I used to kind of hate signing artwork because I was like, well, isn't the artwork kind of the signature? Why do I need to like muck it up with a signature on the front? But you live and learn and people want what they want. And that's what this person ran into is the different comic cons they'd go to as just Farlane the Goblin, but then people wanted a name. And so decided, okay, let's figure out a pen name. So the pen name is Pug Grumble. And I guess you'll find that on different reprints and, uh, uh, newer editions and things like that and and the name listed under this person's Instagram account is under Pug Grumble so it was interesting and I don't want to highlight that too much because like I said I don't think that like they specifically seem like they don't really want that to be the focus um, and really the art speaks for itself at this point all seven books are out so you can get all of them you can get them from the artist I believe that they do have them on Amazon but I think you can get them through your comic shops as well uh, wherever you're at so look to get them through your comic shop or uh, the artist first. If, if, if that's not showing up or, or very easy, then I suppose you can get it on Amazon because the artists themselves did kind of promote it. They had their work for sale on Amazon. So if you have to. But anyway, I highly recommend this book. I'm sorry I keep like rolling to the left. It's such a long book uh, that I think I'm missing out on some of it. But these are the salt creatures from the salt lands. That was another thing I was really impressed with. The beginning here, he's in this big um, kind of tree boat thing floating along waiting to get to the next land. As he gets through the next land, and you know it's going to be the salt lands, you flip the page and see the salt lands. And they really do, the textures and everything change and it becomes very rigid and you can kind of see a land made out of salt. It's Utah, right there. Anyway, I love it. The cartooning is genius and I think uh, just from a reader standpoint, from young or old, uh, much like a Bone comic book, uh, I think people could really respond to this. I could read this alongside with a much younger person, and we would both really enjoy it, I think. So, highly recommend these guys for the adventures of Farley and the Goblin. Books 1 and 2 I've read already, and highly rec recommend. So, check them out. Alright, moving right along. What's the last one we have? Ooh, this is a good one from a creator I love. All right, along with Matt Kent on this one is Tyler Jenkins and Hillary Jenkins. Uh, Tyler is the artist and Hillary is the colorist slash painter. Um, the, this cover here is done by, by Matt Kent, Kent. I'm sorry, Matt Kent, K-I-N-D-T. You may know him from such comics as um, Mind Management, uh, Red Handed, uh, a lot of good ones. Um, Ether, I think. That's one? Yeah. Anyway, um, he's a, he's a writer slash artist, works in watercolor, beautiful. This cover is his, and that's why I definitely got this one. Uh, they've had some fun variants on each one, um, and I'm, I'm honestly not sure how far it goes. I got through, like, book six or so, um, and finally catching up with those. Now I'm going to be searching out how much more is left. He seems to really, 
I, I think Matt Kent is good about making kind of finished stories. They're serialized like this, but um, they usually have, you know, an end to them, which is nice. So this one is a great uh, ensemble cast. Like I said, Matt Kent, Tyler Jenkins, and Hillary Jenkins, and together it really comes through as a solid piece. This is a situation where different artists working together. Uh, there's nothing lost in translation. Uh, the ball's not getting dropped. It's just getting better at each stage, I believe. Um, almost looks like it's something that could have been done by one person, which has an appeal to it um, from the romantic side of being a cartoonist where you do everything yourself and then just from a cohesive um, factor where there's not a whole lot of hands dipping into it and, and people editing it to death. But uh, yeah, three strong uh, creators on this one and it comes through. I really love the style. So right away, black badge, you see these scouts on the front with all their different merit badges and everything, but then you see these big bombers and, and planes in the background while he's calling in an airstrike. Um, it's pretty cool. It's a weird... Um, so like if we needed to get troops into areas where you just can't get troops into, a good kind of undercover way is to have a sort of elite group of Boy Scouts who can infiltrate, go behind enemy lines, take care of themselves, um, and get the job done. Like I said, be able to do things like call in airstrikes or whatever. And if they get found out, they're just kind of like, oh, sorry, we're dumb kids. We were on a, you know, thing and we just went through a fence and had no idea. And they're just like, ah, get the hell out of here. So it's a really cool premise. And um, I was a Boy Scout a long time ago with my friends and everything. So it's kind of a fun uh, living vicariously thinking about something like that when you were young and and you have, you know, you're taking your uh, bow and arrow merit badges and, and you get to wear a knife on your belt and feel all super cool because you just watched, a, you know, Blade or Rambo or something like that. I don't know. But uh, it's it's super cool. Um, they come off really cool. Like I said in a, uh, Jim Rugg Street Angel, it's a cool thing to be able to have kids kind of as your superheroes. Uh, they just make for good proportion, and you can have a strength to them without having big muscles and stuff like that. And it's almost like an anime uh, sort of trick or something, where like, I don't know, like in certain, like Eon Flux or, or different anime stuff where they really slim down characters to elongate them and everything. You kind of have that with kids already, that kind of tall, slender look, but um, kids are pretty athletic and everything, so you get... Uh, a very dynamic look out of that character design I feel like so this first one took place with them going uh, to like North Korea or something like that um, don't want to give too much away like I said there's a lot of different ones um, at least I've got like one through six right now here's some of the other I tend to go for the Matt Kent um, uh, covers because he's an awesome dude I love his art I've met him a couple times at cons He's always super cool if you ask him a question about anything to really just kind of stop what he's doing. He looks like he's got, you know, a thousand commissions to do. He's always working on something, but he'll really kind of stop and look up and talk to you, um, especially if he's interested in what you've asked him. And uh, he'll do cool stuff like, I don't know if he's allowed to anymore, but uh, really cool sketch signatures and different ideas in his books. In one of them, there was a page down here that he would actually light the corner on fire, and then as it would start to burn, he'd close the book real quick to put it out. And then that would reveal a different image down below when he clean that up and then draw this other thing onto it. Another time I got a book from him where there was like a blank panel in the book. Uh, and if you get a sign from him, he'll go and cut that out and paste it at the back and draw a unique thing on it. Just a super cool guy, very inventive, great imagination. Has a lot of comics out. So if you're look if you like this one or you're just searching for a new writer slash artist who's who's a, a cut above the rest and different. Um, search out Matt Kent, and after seeing the art here by Tyler and Hillary Jenkins, uh, I've got them followed on Instagram uh, to kind of check out what happens to them next. But this is a cool book. Like I said, as it goes through, you start getting these other like sort of rival scout factions and different things like that, and and then there's conspiracy that goes along with it. So it's really like different strike teams and stuff like that uh, at war with each other as well as trying to figure out like who's really in charge are they on the side of good are they not are they being manipulated what's really going on but all from the point of view of a bunch of boy scouts i think it's super cool you'll like it um this comes out through boom studios uh if if you're a person who's really enjoying your image books 
I, I totally hear you. I love those too. But there's a lot of good stuff coming out from Boom Studios, and honestly has been for a while. They released one called Six Gun Gorilla um, that I loved. Um, it's like one of my favorite sort of mini series, but but yeah, I highly recommend this one. Beautiful art. This is a different cover. I'm not sure who did this one. Anyway, I uh, highly recommend it. Matte finished pages, so that's kind of cool because it doesn't have the shiny pages that you do find a lot in uh, beautiful books, but Image does have a lot of shiny pages. So with this one, you get that real painterly quality in the art and on matte pages. Um, highly recommend. You are not going to be disappointed. So that's all I have for today's episode, those three new comics. So we had Black Badge through Boom Studios from Matt Kent, Tyler Jenkins, and Hillary Jenkins. And then we had Far Lane the Goblin, a fairy tale about finding your forest. Um, which, once again, a uh, great tale, and at the heart of it, it is somebody trying to fit in, trying to find a place where they can help. You know, the reason he's searching for a forest is so that he can be a protector of that forest. He wants to matter wherever he goes, and I think that's pretty cool and noble. And speaking of cool and noble, uh, don't forget this awesome... Oh, and that one was by... Uh, Pug Grumble, remember. But I'll have links below where you can find these uh, creators and find uh, their work. And then, of course, Miss Lucy Bellwood from 100 Demon Dialogues, uh, the adventure cartoonist, um, making a strong presence uh, known by her cartooning. Um, with this one and all kinds of other little art projects and uh, cartooning projects, and seems to always have something in the works. So please, please check out this and all these different books. Uh, remember, you don't have to order these online. You can order them uh, at your comic shop or from the artist if you are going to go online. Just get them right from them, and you never know. Sometimes if you do that, then those people are able to sign them as they send them. But anyway, thanks for stopping by. I love you all. Read more comics. You know how that goes. And uh, we'll see you next week on Wednesday, New Comic Book Day. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. If you don't know already, Cartoonist Kayfabe is a huge inspiration behind this show. After all, it is the marching order set forth by Jim Rugg and Ed Piscor, along with Tom Scioli, that gave rise to this segment in the first place. Cartoonist Kayfabe on YouTube is essential for comic book readers and aspiring cartoonists alike. It's the comic book show that the creators are watching. Anyhow, thank you Professors Piscor, Rugg, and Scioli. The education is appreciated. Find Cartoonist Kayfabe's link below.